I have some slides on some key movements. Okay, if you are aware of that, it's really helpful. And anyone wishing to look further or you know do more, understand more, they can always go to Google or search for things. I can give more more uh, links or you know anything that you need. You can ask me. So first is uh, Earth's orbit around the sun that everyone knows. So <clears throat> anti-clockwise. Yeah. So this is a GIF image representing that a small white dot is the moon. And in case you are not aware, the sun also rotates. Okay, it has a rotation. If I remember right, it rotates. One rotation is uh, takes about one month. Next motion we should be aware of is the, the other planets. We have seen that you know earlier, and I'm just illustrating here with one example, uh, Jupiter to. Uh, highlight a difference. For example, here Earth, you know, in six months goes from June to November to the other side here on its orbit. But Jupiter, which takes 12 years to orbit, just moves this much in that time. So just to be aware that different planets have different, you know, orbital uh, revolution period. And the other is the Earth's rotation you know, on its axis. And that's why we see sunrise and sunset. But sun is stationary. It's because of a rotation. It appears like sun is rising and setting. And it's shown in this uh, GIF image where you see this yellow triangle here. There's the Earth rotating. And it's like we are here. So as the Earth rotates, see, you see this dot dashed line. So it appears like the sun is coming up. And then it's going down, this sunset. Okay, and the next one is the Earth's tilt. So Earth is not vertical, it's tilted at an angle. And here it's represented here. So as you see, this is a tilt and the tilt is 23.5 degrees. And if you see sunlight falling here, it's actually falling directly at this Tropic of Cancer only. And the length of day changes depending on where a person is on the switch hemisphere and where you're located in terms of latitude. So uh, the length of the day will change. And it, since this is, uh, you know, uh, 90 degrees here, it's sun rays are falling straight. Here you find, you know, uh, the length of daylight is more compared to below, let's say equator. So as you go up here, the length of day is much more because you know, the more portion of Earth is here uh, having the sunlight. And if you notice here, this portion has more, more portion of the here Northern Hemisphere having sunlight, but less portion of the Southern Hemisphere is having sunlight here. So this tilt is one of the major reasons for many things, including seasons. So I'll come to that. The next one is the solstices and equinoxes. So in this one, you can find, like I just orbiting here, uh, <clears throat> similar to the image I showed. So it's directly hitting sun rays at Tropic of Cancer. And when it comes to here, that was a solstice. When it comes here, it is hitting directly at the equator. Okay. Because of the tilt and this motion, it now came to equator. And this is the autumnal equinox. And then here again, it goes to the lower hemispheres. You see, southern hemisphere, it goes to the Tropic of Capricorn. And then if you go to that side, it will again be directly, sun rays will come directly 90 degrees at the equator. And <clears throat> this is equinox, vernal equinox. So these two are equinox, these two are solstices. And in the next one, you see how the tilt is causing the seasons. And if you see here, that's when autumn ends and winter begins. And then spring, here you have summer solstice. So these seasons, because of the tilt, you find more portion of uh, a particular hemisphere of the earth getting more sunlight. So the days are much longer in summer and days are, days are much shorter in winter. So that's the reason for that. And this is moon's orbit that we all know. And 
depending on how it moves, you find the moon's uh, reflection from the sun changes. So that's why here when it's behind the earth, it's a uh, no moon. And then slowly you see the crescent shape and then becomes full moon. So now, so this is another representation of the same. And this is another one, interesting one. I don't know if how many are aware. So this is a precession of the Earth's axis. So I earlier I showed the tilt of the Earth, but this tilt itself changes uh, represented here in this GIF. So this actually axis changes, tilts, and it, in 26,000 years, this will come back to the original position. And that is the reason we saw, you know, the difference between the tropical zodiac and Vedic astrology, that zodiac. And this was mentioned earlier in last week. So this is the reason for that, the Ayanamsa, the difference in the zodiacs. And this is another interesting one, although we don't have directly nothing to do with this. So this is that the orbital path also changes. Okay, It, it changes uh, very slightly and it changes in about 100,000 year cycles. And these are the eclipses that we are familiar with. So one is, uh, so this is solar eclipse. The so moon comes in between uh, sun and earth. And then we have a lunar eclipse where the moon is behind. And here we have that. And <clears throat> now we have something called ecliptic. So now you can connect to the practical activity that you did. So when I asked you to draw that line extending beyond the sun, uh, and beyond the Earth's orbit, it's actually basically when Earth is moving, like in this short arrow here, it is like looking at the sun. It's kind of the sun's path as seen from the Earth. That's how you can read it. Okay. And this is what is the ecliptic. Let me move to the next. The next concept is celestial equator. And now that you know about the ecliptic, which is like Ecliptic is on the same plane as the sun, planet, earth, everything is on the same plane. But within that, within that, or within that thing, it is in tilted in an axis. So the earth's equator is actually at an angle. And that is what is given by this green dotted line. So that is along the line of the earth's equator. If we extend that also, similar to ecliptic, if we extend that, it's called a celestial equator. Again, these are imaginary ones. Then <clears throat> comes then the concept of celestial sphere. And actually, when you see the night sky, uh, the stars, although they are like you saw thousands of light years away and the sky is infinite for us, literally. So although it's like infinite, but they, it makes a lot of sense to consider that to be of a finite, you know, um, uh, they say it's infinite sphere, but we, for representation, we make it as a finite sphere, which is along that e ecliptic. You just consider that a sphere is, you know, made based on that ecliptic as a diameter. Then all the stars can be mapped onto that sphere. And in particular, the stars which are mapped along that ecliptic are the ecliptic belt. And that's called the ecliptic belt. And we have the zodiac constellations along that ecliptic belt. Okay. And here I have it, uh, another picture here. So this is the, you know, Earth's axis. This is the tilt. This is the equator. This is celestial equator. We have the ecliptic. And along the ecliptic plane only, the sun planets are moving uh, the on orbits. And uh, this is the celestial sphere. So it's like all the stars that we see from Earth are kind of mapped along this sphere. So similar to that Nikolai Tesla, you know, thing, it is what you see is just uh, as though you're representing that in a plane surface, 2D surface uh, along the sphere. That's how it is. Okay. And this is another representation. So so you should remember sun earth is here only this is the thing we see the yellow thing is the sun's this thing uh as we saw this is the ecliptic the green is ecliptic 
and you know this line is the uh, cel celestial north and south pole here and celestial equator is the white one yeah don't want to introduce too many new terms but if you are aware of these that's sufficient for now and now we have something on constellations okay <clears throat> so how how you define uttrayan and dakshinayan hmm? in the movement of sun uttrayan and dakshinayan Hmm. Yeah. Uh, can we take that later? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So we have now constellations in general. Okay. And I just have a question. How many constellations uh, do you think 88. are defined? 88. That's right. So the International Astronomical, Astronomical Union has defined 88. And we have those which are along the ecliptic are the 12. Although there are 13, but we consider only 12 in uh, the astrology. And among them, there's the largest one, a constellation occupies around 3.16% 3 of the sky. So they have some ways to measure that. And the smallest is this. So, uh, so as I mentioned, we have these like along the ecliptic belt, what you see of the night sky is what we have. And these are all 30 degrees separate. Okay. So that, and approximately it'll take one month. So each month you find a new zodiac sign directly here uh, as the earth rotates. These are some reference things I've given. Those who are interested can go through that. And this is some uh, simulation. I just wanted to show that just for uh, those who are curious and might like a visual that's better than uh, simple diagrams. So I hope it's visible to you now. Yeah. So if I move this, let's say, around two and a half days per second, the movement, or rather let me increase it to uh, 10 days per second, the movement is going. So in uh, three seconds, you'll find this moves from one zodiac to the next zodiac sign. So this is how it is all planets, everything will be on single plane. And this is the asteroid belt. After that, you have the Mars and gas chains. And this uh, shows as per the month, how it's rotating. And the zodiac signs, as I had mentioned last time, they are static, they're literally static. They're not gonna change. So that's why uh, the ancients were used to predict seasons and all those things based on the zodiac signs. Okay, you can, I have put the link there on the slides. You can always look at it. So let me stop this here.